moving out to New York, where former President Donald Trump is now invited to testify before a Manhattan grand jury. It's all part of their investigation into alleged hush money payments to Stormy Daniels during the 2016 election. So this is a potential sign that prosecutors are zeroing in on an indictment. Let's turn now to CNN's Kara Scannell. Kara, what do you know? Well, that's right. So sources tell us that this invitation was made to the former president's lawyers in recent days to appear before the grand jury. And this is a sign that this investigation is coming to a conclusion and that a decision of whether or not to seek an indictment is likely to happen more in the next few weeks than months. Uh, you know, we've also seen a parade of witnesses going in, Kellyanne Conway, Hope Hicks, you know, all signals that this is getting toward the, the finish line. Um, you know, also today, Michael Cohen went in to meet with the district attorney's office. Our cameras caught him. Uh, and here, Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I have to applaud um, District Attorney Bragg for giving Donald the opportunity to come in and to tell his story. Now, knowing Donald as well as I do, understand that he doesn't tell the truth. It's one thing to turn around and to lie on your untruth social. It's another thing to turn around and lie before a grand jury. Which so I don't suspect that he's going to be coming. Now, sources tell us that among the charges that prosecutors are weighing, they relate to the hush money payment, but hush money payment itself is not a crime. So they're looking at how this payment was reimbursed. You remember Donald Trump signed those checks to Michael Cohen. So prosecutors are looking at how the Trump organization accounted for that in their books and records. So they're looking at possible falsifying business record charge, which is a misdemeanor, or falsifying records in, to, in order to commit or conceal another crime. In this case, that could be campaign finance violations. Now, I mean, this is not an easy easy case. It's a novel legal theory, and Trump's lawyers will certainly have a lot of defenses that they'll throw up at this. Um, we spoke to one of the attorneys, Joe Tacopina, and in a statement, he said the DA and the former DA have been scouring every aspect of President Trump's personal life and business affairs for years in search of a crime and needs to stop. This is simply not what our justice system is about. And as we know, Trump is facing a number of other legal um, challenges, other criminal investigations having to do with the 2020 election, both in Fulton County, Florida, and at the Justice Department level, as well as the handling of classified documents. So certainly a lot coming to a head for the former president. This one looks like it could be the first move. A long time coming, too. Uh, Karis Canal, thank you. Well, let's bring in legal analyst Elliot Williams. So, Elliot, uh, the president has been offered an opportunity to testify. D does that, the former president, does that signal that an indictment, in your view, is likely? It signals that one could be coming. Now, uh, New York is one of the jurisdictions, that, and there are any number across the United States, that give defendants an opportunity, or potential defendants, an opportunity to come in and make their case prior to charges being raised. Now, sometimes people can use that as an opportunity to sort of say, you know, look, I might have engaged in those actions, but here's why, and there's a legal basis for why I did them and so on. The problem is that it's fraught with peril to do that because number one, he would have to waive what's called his immunity. So any statement he made could be used against him. And number two, he can't control the questions that he's asked. So for any number of reasons, we're probably not likely to see him come in and testify here. So Kara described this as a novel uh, legal theory. Uh, does novel in this case um, equal weak case? What's your take on, on the approach here? That's an excellent question, Victor. And look, the way our law works in this country is that you, you bring cases based on what has come before. And there are some cases that simply, the situation hasn't presented itself before and it's legally complex. And to back up Kara's point, it's sort of a case within a case within a case. You would have to prove first that there were the hush money payments, but then not just that the payments happened, that they happened in knowing furtherance of another criminal offense. So it's not just writing a hush money check to, to quiet down somebody who might have embarrassing facts about you. It's because you know you're violating campaign finance law. That's never been done. And that's a big leap and a big step for what ultimately could be a misdemeanor or a very, very small penalty that doesn't even carry, doesn't require, isn't required to carry jail time. So yes, they can do it. And you know, there's certainly a path to it happening, but it's not particularly straightforward legally. Yeah. Talk more about the potential charges because it could range anything from a misdemeanor to a felony. So in terms of sentences that they may carry, what are, what's on the horizon here? 
Sure. Starting with the felony, even if, so let's pretend that the prosecutors even are able to establish, look, these hush money payments were made to suppress or to submit, to suppress or commit a campaign finance violation. Even that has a maximum four-year sentence, and nobody gets a four-year sentence for a campaign finance violation, and it's not even required to send them to jail. So it would be maybe for probation or, or something like that. Um, that's a lot of legal wrangling to go through for somebody that may never end up going to jail in the first place. So, hmm. uh, and then, and if that doesn't happen, it's just a misdemeanor, which doesn't even carry like less than a year in prison. So there's just not significant penalties that even under the best of circumstances would come from this case. Let's talk about Michael Cohen. Uh, we just heard from him. He was there at the Manhattan DA's office today. A source tells CNN he'll be back there Monday. And it's been pointed out that yes, he's con a convicted felon. He's a proven liar, but he, he, he lied on behalf of, of Trump. Right. How problematic is that for this case and how much of the case really hinges upon Michael Cohen's word? Sure. Well, based on what's publicly available right now, the strongest evidence they have is Michael Cohen's word. And I want to be clear, he testified under oath before Congress as to the facts of this um, of, 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 of this case here. So that itself is powerful evidence. It's under oath, it's sworn, and so on. The simple fact is he is a convicted felon based on honesty issues. And any defense attorney is going to hammer him and hammer a prosecution here over the fact that the star witness uh, has serious credibility issues. So you know, when Kara had mentioned earlier in the segment that they were bringing in a number of other witnesses and trying to get other evidence, I think that's to insulate around the fact that the evidence that you have in Michael Cohen just isn't that strong. He might be telling the truth, but he's got credibility issues. And in court, all that matters is can a jury believe the evidence that's presented to them? And when they have a witness who will himself admit on the stand that he's got a felony conviction, it's just harder to, to believe them and harder to convict them.